Welcome to Top Landing Gear and to our series of interviews from the 2021 Bournemouth Air Festival. Now, regular listeners to Top Landing Gear will know that our aviation expert James Kartner is a former RAF Puma pilot. As such, he has some kind of weird chip on his shoulder about the mighty Chinook, alleging that all any Chinook crew will talk about is how much it can lift. But for the rest of us, and I suspect for James as well, although he'd hate to admit it, the Chinook is an incredible aircraft, and its impressive display has long been a crowd favourite. We managed to persuade Chinook display captain, Flight Lieutenant Matt Smythe, or Schmitty, to talk to us despite James's grudging hostility. I jest, of course, and in fact, during our four days in Bournemouth, we became great friends with the whole Chinook display team. Well, we like to think we did. Now, this is very interesting because uh, there's been a lot of talk ever since uh, Top Landing Gear began about James's relationship with the Chinook. James is a Puma pilot in the RAF. Anyway, nice to meet you. <laughs> and that was the vo- Good. This is exactly... That's all we need. We can cut there. You've just heard the voice of Flight Lieutenant Matt Smith, who's from the oh, RAF... Matt, Ch- Matt Smythe, sorry. Matt Smythe, sorry, I'm sorry, that, yeah. Matt. No, no, no. From no. the... Uh, they're like this Chinook guys, aren't they? They're a bit that, yeah. picky. That is typical Chinook. <laughs> <laughs> he's from the he's, Prima all of us. <laughs> he's from the RAF Chinook display team. So I just want to see, we've already got a taste of it, how these two guys are gonna gonna hit it off. Well, I, I just wanna know how much can you lift in a Chinook? That's be an interesting thing to <laughs> <laughs> But you've obviously had this question before. Um, inside or outside? Oh to- total up, max so, all at mass. To- max all at mass is twenty four and a half tons. That's more than the viewer. Yeah. <laughs> this is all he ever talks about because he says that Chinook crews only talk about how that much they can lift. And that's it. So he's got a chip on his shoulder. Matt, I have to say that of all the displays that I've been to recently in the last sort of 10 years or so, with family and friends, one of the displays that just is jaw-dropping is the Chinook because it is just extraordinary what that lump can do. Uh, no, I quite agree with you. Um, I, I got onto the... I got onto the Chinooks about 10 years ago uh, and I remember watching it practice when I was there and it, it just doesn't look like it should uh, I, I agree with you um, what looks like a four ton truck on wheel uh, on wings sorry um, yeah, you'd think would fly, fly like one as well but it, it flies like a sports car it, yeah. it's incredibly manoeuvrable uh, and part of that is you know, jokes aside uh, we obviously banter each other a lot but a lot of it is to do with the power we've got uh, and it's down to the aircraft you know um, one pilot to another we're all much the same we get trained to fly that aircraft um, but it, the, the immense power that that aircraft has is is, is unbelievable uh, and it helps get us out of well helps <laughs> helps perform at shows like this and helps get us out of um, you know out, out of danger at, at the worst of times so it's, it's brilliant what was your path onto the Chinook? Um, so I've been at Medicio, so I went straight through flying training so uh, the Grob Tutor um, the Squirrel Griffin and then yeah straight on to straight on Chinooks so I've got no other background so I've been yeah doing Chinooks for 10-11 years now yeah were you surprised by its capability? yes um, <laughs> yeah, there are no other words for it um it just, I mean, it's, it's a very easy aircraft to fly. Uh, and it, 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 Pilots say this, and I don't really ever believe them. Um, well, J- James can be an advocate of this. Um, no, it is. I mean, uh, all joking aside, and it's not joking, it, I mean it. Uh, but no, it is it is the, as a bit of kit, the Chinook is something amazing. You know, everything goes into lift. There's no tail rotors to worry about. There's so much power there. And you can't help but be impressed by the aircraft and some of the people that fly it. That's <laughs> that's hurt, it? He's changed his tune, hasn't he? I'm standing next to a very tall Chinook pilot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but so when you started to uh, fly the display, I mean, obviously you knew the capabilities of the aircraft by this stage anyway, but w- were you at all tentative about the sort of things that you were going to be asking it to do? So the first time, so I, I should also say I was, I, I'm lucky in the fact that in 2018 I was one of the co-pilots, so I have had the privilege of doing this twice now right. uh, but sitting in the seat the first time I sat there and you are letting someone else handle so it, it does feel you know it's never nice letting someone else do it when yeah. you obviously want to want to be the one but the first time you do a, a nose over let's say so you're up to 50, 50 degrees nose up yeah. uh, you know the last time I did that was in a, a grub tutor doing a loop loop <laughs> um, you know for, for aerobatics yeah. doing it in a helicopter is, is something different and then going from 50 up to 50 down in the space of 3 seconds is uh, it's thrilling. It's absolutely fantastic, and it's part of the reason why I obviously volunteered to do it for a second time round. Um, how, how much of the display is your personal input? I mean, obviously, you know, each, each, each display pilot likes to put his own little little 
twist on it. How much of this is yours? Um, it's, that's actually a really interesting question, uh, and without getting too in depth and too boring about it, um, we're, quite, we're quite boring. People. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we are actually. Um, I don't want to say the word limited, but we yeah. we have a set routine that we've been doing now for about five or six years, right. uh, and it's something that we've sat down in de- you know, long discussions with our um, uh, the, the Chinook DT, um, so the delivery team, yeah. and it's effectively there are our engineering experts. Uh, versus us and we'll, we'll, we sat, we've sat down long conversations and it's it, it's set for a reason and it, it's set within aircraft parameters we're, we're the only as far as I'm aware we're the only Chinook force that has a display yep. uh, and I know Boeing have a we shouldn't uh, <laughs> yeah go on they, 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 <laughs> pop parts of they, they, they aren't they don't fly the aircraft to the same limits yep. that the, the Royal Air Force do uh-huh. but we've been doing it for 40 years we've got the background of it and, we, and we've been doing it for long yet. Uh, absolutely um, but it's, it's it's a set routine for a reason um, yeah. so we, we don't necessarily get to put our, our stamp on our show yeah. like you would do on a Typhoon or the Reds etc get to make, mix it up preview and, and sort of change it around um, but what we can do is have an impact at the shows so you know um, how we meet and greet people we've got the trailer this year we've had tents in the past uh, and just trying to make that bit more bespoke to the team each year is is how we get across um, how the Shinnok Force operates if that makes sense and there's one other small, small difference I was a role demo pilot for the Puma a few times mm-hmm. obviously you're a display what's the difference between a display and a role demo can you is there, is there a, a defined difference can um, James call himself a display pilot that's what this is leading to <laughs> um, I, I, I've, done, <laughs> I've done both as well I, I think Usually, the role side, as I'm sure you'll agree, is watching troops fast rope out the back. Yeah. It's, it's demonstrating the role of the aircraft, isn't yeah. it? It's under some loads, fast roping, winching, you know, landing on troops, running off with blanks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's, that's how we use it day to day, isn't it? I guess yeah. is, is probably the easiest way of looking at it. Whereas the display is pushing it to its limits. Yeah. Um, and you know, we do that on ops, and we, the, the, the role of it is pushing it to limits yeah. in, in theatre. But um, this is. Peace time. This is all the power you've got, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I just there isn't. I, if I'm honest, I think a roll demo is just as exciting as a display. Um, in in some ways, more exciting. Um, it just depends what you've got on offer and who you who you're showing it off to. I was to say displaying to because it mixes up. But um, <laughs> no, I think they're both. I generally think they're both just as exciting. You mentioned a few moments ago that you were the co-pilot before becoming display leader, but it does take two of you to fly this display, does it? Which which is quite. Interesting. I mean, that's un- unless you're talking about something like a Lank, there aren't too many uh, displays that are, you know, double-handed. No. Um, uh, so I spend 90% of my time obviously looking out, and it's all vis- a lot of it's visually judged. I've got markers I'm looking for um, to get the angle bank right, the nose up right. Um, but the left-hand seat, the co-pilot, is instrumental in, in making sure it's accurate. They're there for safety, so I don't go too low. I don't go over bank. I don't over bank. I don't go o- you know nose up, nose down too much. Uh, and they are uh, and. A- they won't mind me saying it, but I've done it in the past. They're a talking rad out. They're a talking AI, so uh, an artificial horizon, effectively. Um, and actually, they probably have the worst time of it because they're staring in most of the time. They don't get to take in the view. Uh, and if I'm honest, they're, they're in your ears, then just completely messed up because you're getting thrown from 50 degrees up to 50 degrees yes. down. And it's, it's quite unpleasant at times, if I'm honest, <laughs> um, with your you know, hand on the combing, trying to stable yourself and still put, provide the right-hand seat all the information he needs, Interesting. The, the right cadence, etc., to, yeah. to, you know, to to perform as, as accurate as possible. So what's happening to the guy in the back with the orange glove <laughs> um, during all of this? Yeah, a bit of a milkshake, really. Um, <laughs> no, he... Um, again, he's instrumental, so there's a lot of the time um, both front end are, are blind on the crowd, are blind, blind on Dayton, where we're trying to fly to all the time. Um, he's got the, you know, the new position of, sort of being able to bounce between either side of the aircraft. He's as far forward as you can get during most of the display, uh, and it's not until we do what we call a pedal turn on crowd right he then runs the back basically unhooks hooks himself back up uh, and then is in position um, to get his hands out and, yeah. and, and wave at the crowd which yeah. uh, you know, it, it pains me to say but I, I think is that probably one of the, the biggest crowd pleasers of the entire yeah, event which is love me, me just sat in the hover flying sideways at 20 yeah. knots yeah. Um, but yeah I think, I think that's, you know, that's the interaction we give that other teams can't yeah. uh, and it's absolutely fantastic to have you mentioned crowd data I just wonder how different and more difficult is it doing a display over sea where you've got your references are far fewer, I imagine, than a land-based display. I think by the time you actually come to display, I mean, we've done this hundreds of times now, so it, there's definitely a routine. If it, familiar, you're just kind of in the cycle of it. We step everything up a little bit because um, contrast on the ground is obviously, as you said, it's, it's just it's different. You might one day monochromatic, there's nothing out there to look at, no horizon, etc. Yeah. Other days, like at the moment, it, it's actually very nice. You'd be able to see the seafront or see, see the sea underneath you. It's absolutely fine. Um, it, it's definitely that little bit harder, um, but 
um, guys at the TSA or wherever we're displaying will in every particular got my teeth back in inevitably put out boys or markers that again they'll brief you on you'll fly to and it's just there's a straight line out there difficult to see from where we're stood but there's a straight line you fly up and down basically and you'll just see a line of boys and, and you're up and down it um, yeah. and that's it you know you, you've got your safety margin that's yeah. the one and yeah, you fly to it um, what's the most demanding part of the display for you all the interviews <laughs> 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 this should be the most troublesome actually, I'm hoping. Yes. yes. Uh, um, uh, I don't want to say any of it's ridiculously difficult. Again, we've practiced and practiced and practiced like, like everything, so it becomes routine. Um, if I had to pick one one manoeuvre, it's it's probably the roller coaster, which is two nose overs. So where you see the aircraft pitch up, then pitch down, we'll then try and hit datum at the pitch down and do it the same again so we do two nose overs which we call the roller coaster uh-huh. and it's just doing a nose over is difficult trying to get two in exactly the right spot bear in mind when we've got zero airspeed at the top the wind is has a massive effect on us um so it can blow us on crowd off crowd in, in all sorts of directions and just trying to get them both accurate to yeah to datum which is where we're trying to display to yeah. is probably is probably the hardest bit yeah. um do you have a particular display cab, display aircraft, or is it whatever's available on the line that day? So we've got three different types of aircraft in the fleet at the moment, yep. Mark 5s, Mark 6s and 6 Alphas. Mm-hmm. We can only display on 6 Alphas, um, of which we've probably got about 30 of them. Right. Um, 27 Squadron, which is where I'm from, have any one time probably about five. That that does vary, yep. uh, and depends on what's in depth, etc. Um, we then try and keep it to the, the same few because there's fatigue elements on the aircraft, etc., that, that don't impact normal flying. Yeah. Uh, so one hour of display flying is equal to five hours of fatigue, if that yeah. makes sense. Uh, and they're all different life X's on different parts. So you can see how it becomes really complicated for engineers to yeah. then keep on top of where, where everything is. So they will try and give me one or two aircraft to try and just use all the time so it's easy yeah. for them to keep top, keep track of. Um, and obviously, every now and again, we're fortunate enough to have a painted aircraft. Yeah. Um, and... Fingers crossed, that's what we'll have this weekend. Um, however, uh, again, there's a whole engineering piece that is in place to try and make sure it's I was going to go on to that. The, obviously, the team is, people see you, they see the big hands. There's obviously <laughs> a big, big um, ground team supporting you, engineers who don't get out to these events, who are back at Odium or Benson, um, who you know, are just as important as, as, as the rest of you guys. No, absolutely. And at the end of the day, I'm, you know, joking aside, we've before we break them they fix them yeah. we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be flying if it wasn't for them and yeah. they, they know the aircraft inside out um, there's a whole, gr- whole group of them at Odium that won't be able to make it we are fortunate enough that we obviously we can take our engineers with us because yeah. there's a, a massive cabin down the back we can get them in so our guys they'll be engineering the aircraft clearly before and after we fly it but they'll be down at the beachfront as well getting to enjoy it and you know, spending time with us as well and meeting the public which is which always great So Matt when, um, when your time with the display team finishes and you're back on to what I call normal operations how much of what you can do or what you've learned to do with the display team could you use in a, a real world situation? Is there, is there other elements of the display that might get you out of trouble in a, in, in a, in a, in a, a combat situation or, or under or, fire? Or into trouble. <laughs> or, or even into yeah, trouble. Definitely into yeah. trouble at times. Yeah. Um, uh, so to answer the first part of your question, we never actually leave frontline operations. So... Okay. Um, Unlike other teams, um, I'm still on 27 Squadron. Yeah. I'm on exercise in a week's time for two weeks. Um, I got back from deployment in January. Um, one of the guys can't be with us this weekend because he's on um, post debt leave. Um, so he's just he got back in the last couple of weeks. So, so we never actually leave frontline employment, if, right. if, if, yeah. that, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stuff in the display we won't do in operations because there's no need to be pulling up to a 50 degree angle bank in, in front of the enemy. Um, yeah. And if anything, they just make you more of a target. Sure. Um, but what it, what it does do is... It, it hones the skills it makes your fly more accurate and it, it certainly gives you e- either seat and, and again down the back it, it makes you more aware of the capability of the aircraft uh, and that so it has a benefit uh, no, absolutely yeah, um, uh, yeah ju- and just having that better understanding of the aircraft you fly is you know I've been doing this 10 years and I won't for a second claim to be any kind of expert there's always something to learn and I think the, the second you think otherwise is, is probably yeah. the time to either retire or or, or you know, give up to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's it's always a learning, always a learning piece, which sounds really cheesy. I do appreciate, but I, not I, at all. Um, yeah, a big advocate of of well, continually learning. If I'm honest. Now, what's competition like to get to where you are now to, for the uh, to be the display pilot for the Chinook? Is it quite a difficult process? Um, I, I guess so. It's, it's it's completely volunteer. Um, so a completely voluntary. Sorry. Um, obviously, there's no point having a press man. You lose all your weekends. Yeah. Through, certainly through yeah. the summer, which you know, for some people they're not interested in, which is absolutely fine. Yeah. Everyone has their own priorities or, or, or different um, interests, etc. Um, 
we, we generally flip-flop it between 18 and 27 squadrons. So there's two squadrons and we take year on, year off. So you can sort of see it coming, so you know it's coming. And if you've been involved in the past, you know what you get yourself into. So generally then, it's just the you know, pilots, crewmen, volunteer for the roles of, of the you know, co-pilot, captain, crewman, manager. Um, and then it's just a selection process. So you write a paper why you think you'll be good at it, uh, and it goes to the hierarchy. So I obviously didn't see how many other people volunteered for it that year, but the squadron's only 100 strong, aircrew-wise. Yeah. So in even 50-50 splits there's 50, air, uh, 50 pilots you can weed some out going they're not going to be interested the junior guys obviously aren't going to put their name with the captain so you know it's not there's not a huge list but at the same time it's still competitive because yeah. clearly everyone well a lot of people still want to want to do it it's, it's great fun um I'm really black flag, you know yeah, that, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not actually mine we just found it outside yeah. so you probably want to see that guy by the way yeah. he's got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got a good concussion tied up around the corner yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, we, we've heard interminably since this podcast launched uh, a Puma pilot's view of a Chinook crew. What's the Chinook crew's version or viewpoint of those on the Pumas? Are we still recording? We're yes. still recording. This is, you, this <laughs> is for posterity. <laughs> um, I, I think at the end of the day, jokes aside. Um, no, no jokes. No jokes. <laughs> jokes. I mean, it's a, it's a training aircraft, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Uh, good. This is what we want. <laughs> this is what we want. Good, good, good. Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, we've, we... Don't toe the line. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got too many friends on the ship. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Not anymore, uh, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, there's always a bit of banter, and the, the one thing I'll always say, and I, I know James will back me up here because he'll, he'll he'll love this, yeah. but it, it's the aircraft. It's not the crew. It, it is absolutely the aircraft. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be flown that. I, I actually got stream pumice uh, in 2010, yeah, okay. uh, and when the SDSR happened, I was just right place, right time to. Get the oh, aircraft wrong I place, wanted. wrong time. Yeah, <laughs> we can we can discuss this later. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm sure it's a fantastic aircraft flying. There's guys on my force that that, that love their time in it. Um, they just then wanted to fly an aircraft that did things. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> this is, this is good. Well done, well done, Matt. Go and look for a new job uh, and enjoy the weekend. And we can't wait to see your display. Thank you so much no, for thank chatting. Thank you very much Thanks, for having Matt. me. Cheers. Good Matt. Well, huge thanks to everyone who took time to talk to us. And remember, you can hear more interviews from the Bournemouth Air Festival and all our Top Landing Gear podcasts wherever you normally get your podcasts from. You can also follow us on social media at Top Landing Gear and get in touch with us by email at info at toplandinggear.com. That's info at toplandinggear.com. Two Gs. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 